Hey guys, it's Lynette. Let me take these off. Um, just coming back really quick with a short video. The last time I um, came to talk to you guys, um, I knocked over. I'm sure you remember I knocked over my, my iPad because I was trying to get my box of cannabis oil so I could show you what, um, what I'm taking. Um, okay, so this is, this is the syringe. I've already, you know, taken some right there. Um, this is legit, guys. It's as good as the very first one I had. Now, not slamming any business, but this syringe is from Lazarus Naturals. And I ordered this, and this is essentially just CBD oil. It, it claims to be an RSO. See right there, it says full spectrum RSO. This is not high potency at all. I mean, when I take this, I don't get any, you can see I've taken, you know, quite a bit. I don't get any psychotropic effects from it at all. Um, so I would say do not waste your money on this if you're looking for a high potency RSO. Now, the place that we get this from, it's the what, uh, the Beard Brothers Farms, Beard Bros Farms, and it is full spectrum cannabis oil. Now, this one has, um, sorry, 79.26% total. That's 4% CBD and the rest is THC. So you do, when you're fighting cancer, you definitely do want to get a high THC product. Okay, this is it. I tried doing the half a grain, I'm sorry, the whole grain of rice. I slept like, I think I slept 12 hours and then woke up high again um, because I have to start reintroducing it slowly to myself. But um, I started with the whole grain of rice thinking I could pick right back up where I left off. No, I did a half a grain of rice last night and I did sleep um, eight hours. Um, so yeah, um, this is legit. Yes. And I told you guys I would not want to refer you to a product that I haven't tried or haven't tested myself. And I have a total of three of these now. Um, this one that I'm operating on, this one, ooh, don't fall. And then this other one. So um, this will last me a good while um, because I'm back down to half a grain of rice. Now, with that said, you know, I do, I've, and I've talked about edibles before. I really prefer these, the Nanos. Um, they're only five milligrams of THC per these, you know, these little rounds. And I'll show you the difference. This is the um, passion fruit. How can I, oh, there, Durr. Um, this is the passion fruit one. The key lime pie is the same size, just a different flavor. These ones are only five milligrams. Let me see if I can find it on here really quick. Yeah. See right here, it says 100 milligrams of THC. There are 20 pieces at five milligrams each. So for me, oh, and this is um, Indica. This one right here is a hybrid. Okay, for me, in order for me to feel any type of effect from this, like it helping me to eat or helping me to sleep, I eat four, okay, because there are only five. Usually, like with this one, it's 100 milligrams total, but there, and it has less than two milligrams of, of CBD, but these are 10 milligrams each, and I'll pull one out so you can see. These ones are really tasty. So these ones I only have to eat two. These bags are adult proof. Um, and you can probably, yeah. See, there's the difference in size. This one's five milligrams, this one's 10. 
Um, they don't make these um, in the 10 milligram. They only make it in the five. Um, but these little are these Smokies, yeah, they're Smokies edibles. This one's sour peach. They also have a, um, a tropical one that's really, really good. But I prefer the Nanos because they hit faster. And usually if I'm having to eat edibles um, in order to sleep or in order to eat and feel well, I want something that's going to hit quickly. This does not hit as quickly. It hits as hard, but not as fast. So I'll eat these maybe like an hour before I want to go to bed, if I remember. Um, you know, you can go to other like seshes. My daughter picked these up for me. Um, this is an 800 milligrams per bag. And I thought these would be stronger, but they're really not. Um, I actually have not ate these and felt a high. So um, I need to let her know because she's, she's trying so hard to get my stuff for me. These are like those spider gummy things. I thought one of these would at least have some kind of reaction, but it didn't. And those are like homemade. So usually my experience with homemades, they're much stronger than, you know, the, the store bought, but that's not the case. Um, my daughter, oh, this is another, it's another Kana, Kana brand, just like this but this isn't a nano. See, this is a regular. And I think these are 10 milligrams. Yeah, 10 pieces, 10 milligrams each. I don't know why they make the nanos in the smaller five milligram. But here, here's a difference, or not so much a difference, but this one only has five and this one has 10, but they're the same size because they're the Kana. This one's, um, the watermelon one and this one's a passion fruit so there's that um, I do really like this brand though but again if you want it to hit quick get the nano I think that's all the edibles I have I'm gonna need to um, go to the dispensary speaking of you're probably going hey so where did you get this um i we got this at a local dispensary called flavors and it's in riverbank i don't know if they do mail order um but you can ask them um let me see if i can pull up i probably should have did this sooner i'll see if i can get the phone number for you and then you can call and find out if they will do mail order. And if not, um, maybe they could refer you to someone who could. Flavors in Riverbank. That's Riverbank, California. Okay. Where's the phone number? The phone number is 209-554-0801. Their address is 2213 Patterson Road in Riverbank. Okay. Let's see if I could... I don't know if that's visible. Yeah, there's, there's the... Whoa. Okay, yeah. Because I'm talented. I just cleared the screen. Okay, hold on. Okay. There's the phone number right there, and there is the address. Okay. Um, so there's that information. I definitely wanted to come back and get that information to you. There's also something. Oh, I'll show you how I take my RSO. This tastes like poo. It does not taste good. It's, it does not taste good. It tastes terrible. Okay, let me see if I can get this in the light. What I do, you know what, I'm going to pull out a green one so you can see it. I think the green ones are lighter in color and you can see it better. Yeah. 
there's a key lime. What I do is I just dispense a small amount just like that. See how thick it is, you guys? The See the oil on the bottom? It's not that I want to waste it, but it's really, really thick and sticky. Um, this is about the amount that I can hang with where I won't wake up tomorrow and be super stoned um, because tomorrow, as you guys probably know, um, I have to... Um, do my blood testing for chemo on Wednesday. But all I do is I fold this in half, get the RSO to be squishy inside there. Oop, just stuck my fingernail in it. That's lovely. Okay, yeah, just fold it in half. And then I eat it. The gummy tastes really good. The RSO, yeah, not so much. Um, I will eat this other five one be just only because I took it out and I had my fingers all over it. Um, and then my daughter got me it's really uh thick. You'll literally have like a film in your mouth. I used to dispense it like I do my CBD oil. This is my CBD oil. I know I've showed it before. Um, but I usually dispense it sublingual, which is under your tongue, because it the absorption is better. But this stuff is so thick, you guys. Just eat it. Um, and if you can eat it on a gummy or something... Um, even better something that will like break up that taste for you because it's like nasty and I'll show you the difference with the Lazarus one it's really runny see that that's not true RSO okay uh, sorry for the face <laughs> It's not happiness right there. So yeah, I wanted to make sure to come back because so many people are looking for RSO. Um, I'm fortunate enough to live in California and weed is legal here. Um, you know, I, <laughs> I've learned ever since contracting cancer, contracting it like I caught it from somebody who... Um, ever since I was diagnosed with cancer, um, I have learned so much about weed, so much, um, because it is a tremendous help to me going through chemo and radiation and all of that. It helped me so much. Um, so I'm a big supporter of it. Um, and it wasn't like I smoked a lot of weed prior to this. Um, I started, I wasn't sleeping well. I haven't, my sleep has been kind of messed up for, I'd say, probably the past five years. And I've been dealing with cancer for two. Um, I would only sleep like four hours a night. And I'd be okay with that for a week, but once the week was up, my body would just kind of shut down. So what I would do is I would smoke a little weed before bed one night, and I would sleep like really, really well. And that would kind of refresh me to keep going. Um, but again, it wasn't something that I would do every night. I'd only do it when I felt like my brain couldn't function. Um, and the sleep, you know sleep helps um so uh yeah that's me and my weed story <laughs> um i have been taking extra vitamin c i have a packet i should have brought it i'll show it on the next video i have a packet of what's called liposomal vitamin c um and i took it at the beginning of my cancer journey and i found 
I don't know though if it was the chemo that was causing me like pains or if it was the high dose of vitamin C. Um, and I'm guessing that if it was the high dose of vitamin C that it was causing pain because it was killing cancer. Um, I stopped taking it because I started doing other things, but um, I'm gonna probably give it a try again. And the kind that I have is in a small little packet and it's a really thick syrupy kind of um, vitamin C. It does not, no matter how much you stir it, it will not like um, break down in water. It just stays that thick syrupy sludgy vitamin C. Um, and they tell you to put it in like three ounces of water, I believe. At least three ounces or something like that. Um, which I don't really get because you squeeze it in there and it just blobs itself to the bottom. I don't know if it the water's supposed to help it slip down your throat better or what it is. And I haven't tried putting it in tea, but I might. Um, but I will be researching ways on how to take that better what is you know what is the best way to um to to dose yourself with that um maybe putting it in some warm liquid will help um but i will let you know about that as far as the halen 951 i found one site where i can get three bottles for 170 dollars I'm not doing that quite yet. Um, I still have some other supplements and stuff that I need to buy. But I did find out that it is soy isoflavins. And Halen 951 isn't, um, it isn't like a dog dewormer or anything like that. It's actually nutrition for your body. It helps build your immune system and other things as well. Um, but they consider it a food supplement. Um, and I think that, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, going to try it, you know, I mean, I can always use the immune boost, um, all of us that are, you know, autoimmune suppressed can use it, use, use, use it. Sorry for my English guys. Um, so yeah, um, I'll be, you know, getting that when I can. Um, also my oldest son, um, I received in the mail yesterday, my enema kit. Um, he got it for me off of my Amazon wish list. So, um, I don't know if I'm going to wait for my tumor markers to start dropping or if I'm just going to try it. He, he even ordered me the organic green coffee for it. Um, I might just start. It. You know, it, it can't help, right? It's a, it's a cleaner. I'm kind of like, you know, nobody wants to do an enema, you know? Um, but uh, if it's going to help me in this cancer battle, then I'm going to do it. I'm going to like watch a few different YouTube videos, see if I can get, I don't even know if, I think there was one YouTube video that showed how to set up the coffee tank and all of that but um, I'm gonna do some research online and find out exactly how I'm supposed to go about it I got to open the box and um, read the you know the pamphlets and stuff that came with it um, so um, one thing I haven't really discussed on here is um, a few years ago two years ago uh, we had partially paid for a cruise and when I found out it was supposed to happen in April of 2019 but I found out that um, I had my Whipple scheduled in April and I knew you know at that point we weren't going on it. So it was early enough and it hadn't been fully paid off. It was early enough that I could switch the date. So I switched it for next month. Um, because it was supposed to have been at that point 
It was supposed to have been a celebration of surviving the Whipple surgery for me. Um, and now there's like the coronavirus issue and the flu issue. And I rarely ever leave my house as it is right now because, you know, I don't want to get sick. Um, I don't, it's completely paid off. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to lose all of that money if I were to try to reschedule. I talked to my oncologist. Um, he said he doesn't know how to advise me about it. Um, I mean, the cruise line that I'm going on, I've been on 13 cruises, never got sick. I know a lot of people think that cruises are like floating petri dishes, but I've never been sick. Um, I sail on Royal Caribbean and they're, in my opinion, one of the best cruise lines out there. Um, I'm kind of scared. Uh, you know, while I really can't afford to lose the money on the airfare or the money on the cruise, I can't afford to lose my life either. Um, so I'm kind of just waiting. Um, so far, I haven't heard anything really, like, shocking. For instance, you know, the, the Princess Cruise Line just had that ship dock in Oakland that had 21 people on it that uh, were confirmed with the coronavirus. I think that while, while I don't think that it's necessary that everybody go out there and purchase a metric fuck ton of water and toilet paper, um, I don't think it's something we should be like, dismissive be so dismissive of I mean people are dying from it you know and yeah um from what I understand I could be incorrect um it is the elderly that are passing from it um I'm already immune deficient um I'm also diabetic um so I don't know. Uh, you would think it would be a no-brainer. Yeah, stay home, stupid. Um, but it is a lot of money to waste. So I don't, I just, I don't know. I just figured I would uh, talk that out a bit. Um, I am definitely going to wait to see if there are any changes from this month to next month. Um, in, in respect to the coronavirus and its, and its spread. Um, I think a lot of people are canceling going on their cruise and that in fact may work to my benefit that people are so afraid of going on a cruise, of catching something on a cruise that so many people are canceling that it's something that I probably wouldn't have to worry about. I have on order a couple more N95 masks, and yes, they said the mask only protects the people who are sick, and it doesn't protect the people who aren't sick, but I call bullshit on that because if I have a mask on, I can't touch my face. You know what I mean? What they're saying is you shouldn't touch your face, and I don't know if I told you all, but I have like this, I'm not a germaphobe, but let's just start with that. But I do have an issue with hand sanitizers. <laughs> I have a gigantic box filled with hand sanitizers and I have three in my purse at all times. And I don't know if it's because, you know, I'm a mom um, and I've always, you know, kept cleaning wipes or, or you know, Purell in my purse when my kids were, were younger. Um, so it's just, you know, it's second nature to me to always have hand sanitizers on hand or, or cleaners. Um, 
And what they're saying is keep washing your hands, keep sanitizing your hands, and don't touch your face. And that's supposed to help you not contract the virus. Okay, well, if I have a mask on, I can't touch my face. You know what I mean? But anyway, I do have the mask on order, and it is coming in with the filters that go inside of the mask. And I, I ordered like 30 of them. Um, so... I should be covered in that way. Um, I've been packed since last month because, I don't know, I do that all the time. I pack like months in advance because I'm used, I guess I'm used to, you know, having to help my kids with their packing and, and all of that, but I'm already packed. This is just insane. Life is just crazy right now. Um, but anyway, yeah, I just figured I'd talk about that with you guys. Get get your thoughts on that. Um, and I think that's it. I think um, I think I covered everything that I wanted to. Um, if again, if my blood test results come back quickly um, and I'm able to get to the computer I will post my most current oh man I'm sorry I will post my most current um, results test results so you can compare them to last week um, you would think that with um with con consistently getting chemo every other week, that my levels would drop, but they haven't yet. I mean, I'm at really low normal, um, and I think my platelets dropped on the last one, so um, I'll definitely take a, another look at that tomorrow. Um, I'm going in to do the test in the morning, and the results usually come back in two weeks, two weeks, <laughs> two hours, so... Um, if I do get them back quickly, I will most definitely come back with a video and post it. I'm still looking for information about oxybendazole. And I'm still a little booty tickled that I wasn't able to post the post in the Joe Tippins group. The people in there are so incredibly helpful, you know? It is an incredible resource. I just, um, I don't know. I guess because I'm all about helping people, I, I instinctively think that other people are like that. Um, am I going to try to post it again? Maybe. I don't want to run the risk of being booted out of the group, though, because the group has been... Um, incredibly beneficial for me. I'm just really sad that um, I wasn't able to ask about another Zoll. You know, it's not like I'm saying, hey, you, should, you know, I ran into this product called Cell Stop. It's not like I'm pushing a product. I'm literally asking for information Um about oxybendazole. Um, there was one woman in another group. Um, I posted a message um, and a friend of mine who lost her father to pancreatic cancer recently responded to my post and tagged another woman in it who has experience with oxybendazole. And she um, made mention in the comment that she orders it from somewhere in the Middle East. Um, she didn't say where. I did respond to her message and I thanked her for um, the information. Um, it wasn't a lot of information, but I thanked her for whatever she posted and I asked her if she would be willing to share that link with me. Um, I haven't had any response to it yet, but um, whatever I find out, I'll let you guys know. Um, you know, I have pancreatic cancer on my liver. It's not on, 
my pancreas anymore as far as I know. Um, so oxybendazole is supposed to be is supposed to be more effective for pancreatic cancer, which is why I really want to find out about it. But um, with that said, I'm going to close the video before I start yawning again like my last video. <laughs> it is, oh, I took off my watch. It's like 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, it's 1036. Um, so I should be getting to bed soon. This stuff will be kicking in probably in the next half an hour. Um, and I just literally go right to sleep. Um, the high part is if I take too much and I wake up, then I wake up high. Um, and I, I don't, I don't like that. Um, but anyway, I'll come back if I have any new news and, um, thanks for watching my videos and for commenting and all of that stuff. Um, I hope you guys are doing excellent. I hope you had a really fun weekend and I hope to see you soon. Okay. Bye.